what did you make of this outstanding performance? This embodies who the Golden State Warriors are. How's that? Kind of like the Wu-Tang Clan, because when you get going, guess what they do? Keep feeding you, and, and feeding you, and feeding you, and feeding you. And so, Klay Thompson is a residual product of playing with two MVPs in KD, who just had 25 in the fourth quarter at the Garden. You were there. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry, who just recently put up 50. 51. Now he gets his 50-point game. 52. And so, guess how much usage it takes for him to do this? Not much. No. Because of the 14 threes that he made, guess how many dribbles he took? Three. 13. Oh, in the whole game. He yeah, took yeah. 13 dribbles in the game. Just so you know, your favorite point guard is going to dribble the ball down one time and dribble the ball 13 times. Mm -hmm. Okay. He had 52 touches, 52 points. That's effective. That's efficient. That's a guy and a team that understands using somebody to their strength. And when they get going, you continue to milk it and the, maximize. The best thing about this is this wasn't, oh, the defense is so focused on Steph and KD that Clay snuck around and got these little points like on the sly. Like, no, like the Warriors were obviously dribbling up the court, all staring at Clay, setting picks for Clay, trying to get Clay open, saying, you know what tonight is? Tonight is Clay's night. Let's just do it for him. And then Clay recognized this after the game when he said, spoke to reporters. Even before I went out in the second half, Steph looked at the box score and said, go get it. And that just shows you the unselfishness that is with him, within him. Same with, you know, KD and Draymond and DJ and everyone else that was out there on the floor were trying to find me and get me good looks. So this is a string of plays in the second half. I was watching this where he didn't hit all these, but these are consecutive possessions where they're just like trying to find Clay. Every single one. It's like, where is Clay? He can be consecutive and possessions. And There's like, where is Clay? Where is Clay? And then he hits the 14th. They get him 14, and they're like, all right, Clay, I had 51. I had 13 made threes. Now you have 52, and you have 14 made threes. Have a great night. Sit down on the bench. How about the fact that it was still five minutes to go in the third quarter? I know. He's pleasing. 27 minutes, Jalen Rose. 27 minutes. Let me show you why the game and how the game has progressed. There was a time when Sabonis. Ben Gordon and myself were the only three players in the history Our of the Vetus NBA. Arvidas Sabonis we're talking about. Yes. For the youngsters. Yes. Yeah. Were the only three players in the history of the NBA to score like 25 points in less than 30 minutes. Just think about that. That was 25 points in less than 30 minutes. This is not only did he do that last night, he's done it before. Of course. Multiple players in today's game have done. I've seen Damian Lillard do it. I've seen CJ McCollum do it. Clearly seen Steph and KD do it. The three-point shot has evolved to a point when you look at a box score and one guy attempts 24 three-point shots. In 27 minutes. It wasn't in some overtime minutes. game where, you know, where it was a shootout that went to double overtime and he had 24 three-point attempts. That, that, in 27 minutes. That, that's why, like, when his free agency happens, and I was just talking to Stephen A. Smith and joking with him about this, why would Clay leave? Why would you leave the Splash Brothers? Where else are they going to do that for you? Why would you leave a team that you already have multiple championships still going for another one and, and continuing? They're going to give you an offer. And more importantly, the team has shown you that they're going to continue to add to the dynasty. You ever heard of a guy named Kevin Durant? Oh, he joined their team. Well, speaking of Kevin Durant. You ever Durant, heard of Boogie Cousins? He joined their Kevin team. Kevin Durant also took a little bit of a salary haircut to stay on the Warriors. Do you think Clay would do the same? He has said he would not. But also, he doesn't, in theory, have to take a haircut. Like, they can actually take care of him. You got to look at the dynamics of who's taking those cuts. It's Steph Curry. It's KD. It's LeBron James. These are players that get more money from endorsements than they get from the team. You don't think Anta Money's going to make that up? I don't think he will. You don't think the Anta Money's going to be there? But it helps. All of green course. helps. Of course. And his brother played chocolate in milk? the league baseball. Is he the chocolate milk guy? His father played in the NBA. He got the chocolate milk so guy. So it wasn't like when he got drafted... He had to move his family to the suburbs. They was already there. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, so the Golden State Warriors are an ideal situation for Clay, and I don't see them breaking that up anytime soon. I don't think so either. But here's a real question for you. He, he got a little head bonk. He needed two stitches in the middle of the game. We had to wear the headband. The headband was thick. It looked funny on him with the beard and everything. It didn't even look like Clay Thompson making all those threes. The next game, he has to wear the headband, right? Isn't no. that how this works? No. What? That's not how it works? No. Oh, I would definitely be wearing the headband. Here's why. He already made 10 threes before he put it on. So the headband didn't change the, the – he only made four with the headband. 
make 10 without it. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, so he's going to go back to doing. He did kind of cool off with after the headband yeah. came on. Too. <laughs> so yesterday, he was shooting, I think, twelve point nine percent from the field going into the game. Look at how that has changed. So in the first seven games, he was about fifteen points a game, and he was shooting thirteen point nine. That's pretty bad. Just one performance last night, he's now up to twenty nine point seven. I mean, he was slumping. Like, let's be real. It threw seven games, shooting 14% from three. That's not Klay Thompson. And he just exploded last night. Again, this is like the Golden State Warriors have multiple players who don't trump each other. Mm -hmm. Like, what I talked about with the Boston Celtics eventually having to go towards Kyrie's identity versus a team that wants to predicate who gets the shot on ball movement identity. Yeah, yeah. That's something that they got to figure out. The Golden State Warriors' lanes are figured out. Steph Curry, heat check score, that happens to be playing point guard in positionless basketball. Klay Thompson, traditional shooting guard, going to guard the opposing team's best guard mm -hmm. and or small forward. Draymond Green, Swiss Army knife, defensive player of the year candidate, lead the team in rebounds, lead the team in assists, set a lot of picks, do all of the dirty work. KD, he just come in at a higher gun. Bob Myers said this it. Is the thing. This type of basketball is why I was never mad at KD's decision. It looks like the Warriors are having so much fun. You're Steph Curry and KD. You are two of the best scorers in the game. I mean, I don't even, they might be the two best scorers in the game. And they see Clay hit a couple threes, and they're like, all right, it's your night tonight. You do this. And they're all celebrating each other's accomplishments. Steph Curry is celebrating Clay Thompson breaking his record. Absolutely, because he wants to come back and then eventually try to shoot for that high score again. That's the competitive nature of those players. But again, the Golden State Warriors have built something that's truly special. 